record and all right we're in business well welcome to the uh, SCA convocation webinar convocation is a big word for introduction to the course um, today we're going to go over a few things Let me get my there you go we're going to talk about navigating blackboard we're going to talk about major assignments we're going to talk about discussion boards and some keys to success and some good to know information so first up, navigating Blackboard. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if I can pull up Blackboard for you. And we'll go into student view mode. If I can let me see, we are a class 206. Next student view mode. All right, so what you have here are the announcements. You should have seen these already. I'm pretty sure you have. Um, Any time there's a whole class announcement, they'll be posted here. You can find it in the menu here on the left under announcements, of course. And you should be getting them in your email. All right? If you're not getting them in your email, then you need to check the email that you signed up with. All right? So verify that you signed up with. Uh, the best thing you could do is sign up with an email from your personal email and not your work email. That way you can view it from anywhere. All right, if you haven't done that, go ahead and um, get in touch with, uh, you know, give your FA a, a shout and let them know that you need to update it and they'll give you some directions on how to do that. Okay, it's, it, it takes a few steps, but it's not that much of a, uh, it's not that difficult. So let them know. If you're using a work email, a dot mail email, and you can't get that from home, try to go ahead and switch over to a, a your, your personal email, it'll work better. Okay, so announcements. Here's you know we get all these stuff. You're going to be getting lots of announcements throughout the class. Lots of good information. We try to keep them um, so it's done, you're not reading a book, but um, some of them are long. Um, yeah, most of them are very you know important information you need to know, like that involves your travel and and things like that. So keep an eye out on the announcements. All right, let's look at over here and look at assignments. So we have major assignments. We have weekly lessons, major assignments. We have the class schedule, we have the calendar, um, discussions. You should have seen all this stuff already. So let's go and look at the weekly lessons right quick. All right here, you'll find all the lessons you got to do each week. All right, discussion boards, required reading, everything is in here. All right, you can when you click on it, it opens up the checklist. For those of you that like to follow a checklist, you can actually download it, print it off here, stick it next to your computer or wherever you like to keep track of it, all right, and mark things off as you go along. If you're not a checklist kind of person, just keep up with what's going on, all right. We have learning objectives each week, so this is what you should look to see what we're trying to figure out and learn, all right. And then the course materials, so this is where you find the reading, the videos, we even tell you how long the videos are so you can plan your time properly. All this is available for you right here in, in each week. So you've got the checklist, learning objectives, and the course material. Right. And then uh, on the checklist, go back to checklist here, you'll see that there's some extras down here, class up survey, and stuff that are coming due. All right. So what you should do when you're looking at your weekly assignments go ahead and look to see what's coming next so if you're in week one just go over to week two and check it to see what's coming up because you may have a quiz or you may have an essay or something due on Monday right so look ahead just to make sure that you're keeping up with stuff all right so let's look at the major assignments real quick Major assignments, under this tab you find all your essays in the group project, right? all the way down military her heritage. An optional assignment, your biography. If you've never written your biography, whether it's for your command or for uh, a, you know, some sort of requirement with work, here's an opportunity. It gives you, we give you an example, and what you can do is you can draft a copy, send it to your FA, and your FA will take a look at it and give you some feedback on it. All right? This is a non-graded assignment. Uh, you can do this on your own when you have the time. 
All right, next let's look at the, the schedule. So the class schedule, this kind of gives you the overview week to week. You could actually print this out, kind of follows what's going on, gives you one long view of the nine-week distance learning portion. When you get in-house, you'll also find the regular, your class schedules for the in-residence portion here. Let's look at the calendar. All right. Hopefully you've been looking at this and using this. It shows all your assignments as you go week to week, what's coming due. Most everything that we do is due at 0700 Eastern Time. All right. And I know that some of you are uh, in way, way, way on the other side of the world. So we keep it consistent. Everything is based on Eastern Time. Okay. So it means that some of you have, have to post your assignments by early, early in the morning or very late at night. But make sure you do the math and calculate Eastern Time. Okay, so quizzes, essays, all those are due 0700. And you should know by now that discussion board posts are due by 2359. So make sure you're getting those in on time. All right. Let's take a look at quizzes and exams next. So you'll see we have quiz one, quiz two. All right, uh, important thing to note, you only have one shot at each, all right? You have an hour and a half, so once you start it, you have to finish it. You can't save it and come back later, okay? So once you get in there, take your quiz, knock it out, all right? If you have questions, don't start your quiz before you contact your FA to get some clarity on a question, all right, on whether, on something. If you're having some sort of glitch with your quiz, contact your FA straight away so that we can try to fix it for you get it get it resolved all right and let me see what's next okay let's look at writing resources real quick all right so you got the ethics essay coming up that's going to be your first essay all right week one you're working on under you know learning how how we do three-part comms here at the SEA you're working on uh, understanding APA format, so we have lots of writing resources. So you have the resources in week one, all those, the, the, the weekly lesson resources, but you also have the writing resources here, okay? And under mastering APA style, if we go here, you'll see we've got some videos that you can watch, hyperlinks, videos. And then uh, under basics, talks about some of the stuff here, and then APA resources. This is probably one of the most important pages, okay, because we have an APA template right here, all right? If you've never written APA, you don't understand it very well, you can actually download this handout, and it's in Word format, so you can, you can use it as a template. You can write right over top of it with your words and use it as a guide, okay? So if you don't do anything else, download this and use it as a reference. All right, and if you make sure that you set up your your own version of Word uh, on your computer using the examples given in week one, the videos. All right, if you're having trouble with that, contact your FA. Your FA will help you set it up. All right, the next very important thing that you need to know about is this APA manual down here towards the bottom. All right, we have the two main chapters that we use, chapter six and chapter seven, but you also have the complete manual here. All right, and for those of you that uh, you want to explore all the different intricacies of it, right? But everything regarding references and citing your references in your text, most of that's found in six and seven, okay? So make sure you download this, save it to your computer. That way you can open it up and have it at your at the ready. All right, let's go back to the menu. Three-part comms, we have some references here for three-part comms. Again, we've got the handouts. We have our sandwich diagram. Hopefully you've seen this. This is a visual version of three-part communications. Three-part communications is basically an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Three parts, all right? In the introduction, that's where we give them the coming attractions. The body is where we tell them all about what we're talking about. And the conclusion kind of recaps what we've said. And that's why we call it three parts, okay? And if you don't overthink the intro and conclusion, you're going to do great, right? Three sentences is all you need, 
for the very basic three-part communication introduction, an attention getter, motivation, and overview. So make sure that you keep to that. Right? If you wind up writing a 10-sentence paragraph, you've probably put too much into it. All right? You're with them, you should tell them the who, what, and the why. For example, senior enlisted leaders should attend the webinar because it gives, gives them lots of good information. So senior enlisted leaders, the who, what should they do? Attend the webinar. Why? Because it gives them lots of good information. So that's what a WIFM is. All right? And then your main points, read the PE. All of our PEs tell you what the main points are going to be. They're required. Okay? If you use something that's not provided in the PE, you're doing it wrong. I'm going to say that again. If you're not using the main points as they're outlined in the PE, you're doing it wrong. So if it says problem, discussion, and recommendation, then your main points should be problem, discussion, and recommendation. Okay? It shouldn't be background, you know, discussion, and solution. Okay? Hopefully that's clear for you. Use the main points as they're listed in the PE. Okay? And think of your main points as nouns. All right? So, Discussion is a noun. Discuss is a verb. Don't use discuss. Use discussion. Okay? Hopefully that's clear. And when you're writing the body, you have to have a transition sentence in be between each main point. Your transition sentence comes at the end of the paragraph, the main point. So let's say we have two main points as the examples here. So main point one, blah, blah, blah. Transition sentence is the last sentence in that paragraph for main point one, and it says something to this effect. Now that main point one has been, you know, now that we've talked to, I don't want to use first person because we're not supposed to do that. Now that main point one is covered, main point two follows. That's, that's what a transition sentence is. Basically tells you that, hey, we're done with main point one, we're moving to main point two. Very simple. Right. When we're all said and done, you do not put a transition sentence between the last main point and the conclusion because you're going to basically restate your what you said in your overview and your summary. It's going to be basically a past tense version of your overview. So this essay covered da 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 da. Okay. Remotivation, you can almost cut and paste that right in here. That's the very simplest way to do it. It's a, it should be the same thing as your motivation. Right, it's the easiest way to do it. And then your closing comment, closing statement, should be a thought-provoking statement or some sort of quote that's relevant to your topic. Okay? If you use JFK's quote about you know the you know the greatest thing a person can do is serve in the Navy, and your taught your essay has nothing to do with that, then that is a poor use of a quote. Okay. So make sure your quote it ties back into what you're talking about in your in your essay. All right, so beat that horse to death. Let's move on. All right, and then we've got another video resource. Okay, let's go back to writing resources. So when you're doing research, you need to have a, a library to go look look up some scholarly articles. Okay, I'm not going to go in here. This could be a whole lesson all by itself, but you go in here. There's some instructions how to use the library resource. If you're having trouble with it, please contact your FA. We're here to help. That's what we're here for. We want to make sure you succeed. So if you're having difficulties getting to articles and stuff, all your research has to be scholarly and credible. Okay? So if you go to somewhere like brainyquotes.com to get a quote, that is not a credible source. That's a good place to start, but that's not a credible source. So if you go to Brainy Quotes and get a, a quote by Indira Gandhi, right? You need to find out where Indira Gandhi said that and go find that original source. That way you can cite that in your, in your essay. All right, so credible sources. Same thing applies for things like Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a good place to start, but it's really not a credible source. So make sure that you're using credible sources. All right. So we have some other writing websites that you can use, some links to those. All right. And this is something new. Right? We have an academic mentor list. So hopefully, some of you out there already have academic mentors. If you don't, click on this link, and you'll see that little list. 
bam, academic mentors. What branch of service they in, what class they were in, where they're located when they signed up. All right, so you can find someone in the same time zone as you, hopefully. All these people have volunteered to be academic mentors. All right, they want to help you out and be successful. All right, and it's very, very beneficial for you if you've got somebody out there to bounce, off, bounce your essays off of, help you with questions about the course, all that kind of stuff. All right, your FAs are here for you, but it's nice to have maybe a third or fourth party kind of weigh in on it. And if you're, at the very least, you should be keeping in touch with your command master chief, your SEL, or you know your sergeant major, your command chief, whoever it is that um, you know, let them know what's going on with you in the course. Um, if they're a graduate of the SCA, that's even better. That way, they can help you um, work this stuff out. All right, and then we're going to look at where we go to grades. All right, I don't have any grades because I'm not taking the course, but this is where you come. All right, so here's your, where your group would be. Week one's discussion board post that talks about it here. You'll see your grade over on the right. All right, view description. It's feedback only. All right, when you click on your grade, it'll give. That's where your you'll see your feedback. All right, if you're having a hard time, like down here, Ethics Essay, view rubric. All right, you view the rubric, you'll see feedback from your FA and what we're looking for. Right, so if you have questions about your grades and you're having a hard time finding them and seeing the feedback, you, you get feedback on every assignment. If you're not seeing the feedback, you need to contact your FA to make sure you know what's going on and where, it's, where the feedback is, all right, so that you can view it. All right, we, we try to give you the information you need to improve and be successful. All right, if you're not seeing it, then you're going to wind up struggling. All right, so make sure you talk to your FA about that if you're having a hard time finding the feedback. All right, so I think I beat this horse to death. Let's see what's next on the agenda. All right, major assignments. Let's go back. We went too far. Major assignments. Let's go back to major assignments real quick. And get a little bit deeper into this one. All right, so you have major assignments are essays. All right, you have your ethics essay, which is feedback only. This is where your FA is going to tell you, give you a whole bunch of stuff, notes to read, so that you can improve and, and, and track what's you know, make sure that you're tracking with the three-part comms. You'll notice that you're supposed to do an outline. Okay, outlines are important. Right? If you read the PEs, every PE says submit your outline. You know, basically as the FA tells you to. So if you submit your outline um, early, your FA can review it and give you feedback and say, hey, you know, this is what you need to do to to tweak your three-part comms. Make sure that you have, you know, you're missing this, you're missing that. All right, it looks like you got a good, good structure going. Right. If you wait until the day that your assignment's due and you submit your outline with your assignment, then you're not going to get any feedback on your outline ahead of time in order for you to be able to tweak your essay. All right. So submit your outline to your FAs early in the week. You know, with plenty of time for you to go back and revise your essays if needed. Okay. All right, so ethics essay, problem essay, heritage essay, these are all you know, individual essays you're going to write on your own. You'll find in the discussion board area where you can post your um, topics for approval by the FAs. Right? You should you got a group project, right? This is where the entire group works together on an essay talking about a subject of that, that deals with the national national security and stuff, international affairs. So you got to work together on this. And seeing as your group spread out around the globe, um, it's going to take some coordination. So some recommendations are work out a group communication method, whether it's email, whether it's using uh, Google Circles, whether it's using Skype or you know whatever. Um, you use. There are plenty of apps out there. If you don't know anything, you're going to hear a common theme. Ask your FA. Your FA has got lots of resources, got, got things they can recommend for you. Okay. Your FA may have even set something up for you ahead of time. 
to help you out. So communication is critical with this group project. If you're not communicating between uh, members of the group and your FAs, um, then you're not going to be as successful as you can be. Okay. So make sure you get your takeaways for this. Get your outlines in early. Make sure you communicate with each other. Communicate with your FA. So before you turn your essay in, use your mess, use your class, do a little peer review. Send you know somebody your essay and have them look it over. All right. Once you figure out who's who does who's got this three part com stuff down, help each other out. You're a team. All right. And you can help each other be successful just as much as your FAs can help you be successful. All right. So and we talked about the optional assignment. Good. All right, what's next? Come on, click. There you go. Discussion boards. All right. Hey, Glenn, do you want to uh, weigh in here on the discussion boards? You still online? Okay. Maybe we lost him. Looks like we might have lost him. All right, so we'll talk about discussion boards real quick. So we got weekly themes. Um, we're going to talk about some discussion board basics, word count, and citing your resources. So let's go back to, come on, here we go. Let's look at discussion boards. Oh, where am I? Discussion boards. Oh, I know why, because I'm in student mode. Let me get out of student mode. And let's look at the group discussion board here. All right. So you'll have your acknowledgments. You should have all put these in here already. You got your capstone project, and then you have your weekly discussion board. So let's just go. Week one. All right, you got one. You have a question. Answer your question. Reply. You have to have one primary post for each discussion board question and two replies. One reply for each. Okay. So look at the rubric for discussion board posts. Follow the word count. Okay. Some things that you want to make sure that you're not doing is that your discussion board posts are not tweets. They're not Facebook updates. Okay. You need to use these as an opportunity to practice good grammar. Uh, you, if, you, if you're citing a source to support your argument about something, cite it in accordance with APA. Okay. Provide a reference and do an in-text citation. Right. Pay attention to punctuation and spelling. One of the best practices you can do with a discussion board post is open up Word, type your response to the question, do a word check for word count, and do a spelling and grammar check. Right? Do all that, and when you post, you should meet all the grammar requirements and spelling and all that kind of stuff. Right? You can also do your APA citation in there if you have to do APA citation the whole nine yards. Okay, so make sure you're following the rubric. Make sure you're responding by the by each deadline. Okay, um, make sure you're answering the question. Okay, the practice here with the discussion boards is concise communication. So get to the point, answer the question, and these are opinion-based questions, most of them. So let us know what you really think. Don't give us a canned answer. Don't give us the 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 politically correct answer. Tell us what you really think. Your interpretation of the topic your response, what did you, how do you understand the topic and what do, what do you, what are your experiences, especially if we ask you what's your experience, give us an example. Give us an example, right? One thing I want to make sure that you do know is that do not discuss classified stuff on the discussion boards, okay? Should be common sense, but I'm going to reiterate that. Do not discuss classified topics, okay? This is public. That'll get us shut down 
quicker than anything else if we wind up throwing something up there that's secret or confidential right so uh, I know some of you may work in that community so uh, you know give us a sanitized version of a, of a story or pick a pick a story for that's that you can relate to if you don't have a story that is directly related to your military job give us a story of a give us some example that that meets the criteria of the of the topic all right, and then and how we can use that as an example. All right, do some critical thinking on these answer these these questions, and uh, give us some honest dialogue, and uh, and you know you'll get a very enriching experience. Go through and answer somebody else's post. A good another good practice is don't answer the same, don't reply to the same person every week. Try to try to apply to somebody new every week. Spread it around. Get that discussion. Your replies should should basically advance the discussion of the topic. All right. So don't just say, "Hey, I love what you said. That's a great post." That that's not a good a good reply. Right. Ask them a question. To highlight something that they said and and relate it to something else. Give them something uh, something that will continue the conversation. All right. That's the whole point of this. So word count, what's the max word count for your primary post? It's 200 to 250 words. All right. If you're less than 200, you're going to lose points. If you go over 250, you're going to lose points. So get it between 200 and 250. On your secondary responses, it's between 50 and 100. All right. We're talking concise communication. So some people like to just go on and on and on. We're trying to make sure that you get to the point, answer the question, uh, and answer, you know, carry the discussion forward in in a very brief and concise way. Okay, so use the same APA requirements when you're citing sources. I said that already, but I'm going to reiterate that because um, this is a good place to practice it. Okay, so all right, let's see what's next. So keys to success. Be open to learning experience. I'm going to use myself as an example. Don't be like Dale, all right? Because what happened with me when I came to the SEA, I just finished my master's degree, and I remember saying this to one of my uh, senior chiefs I worked with. So I'm like, I got this. I got a master's degree. I can, I can write. I got no problem. It's going to be easy. And I got my first feedback, and I got tore up because. I was overconfident, and I wasn't open to learning the three-part comms the way it was. I resisted it. Um, so be open to learning experience. Um, we're not going to say that three-part comms is the best way to communicate, and we're not going to say that three-part comms is the only way to communicate. What we're going to say is that three-part comms is another way to communicate. Okay, It's another tool to throw in your toolbox. Um, but I can say from personal experience and based on the testimony of several others that have graduated from the SEA, and you can take three-part comms and apply it to presentations, or you can apply it to your written work um, if you're pursuing college, or even if you're not. And um, people like it. I know college professors seem to really like it because it's very organized and structured, um, and it's easy to read. So just be open to learning something new. Okay. And you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is is that we grade on that here at the SEA. You only have nine weeks of distance learning and three weeks of residency, and then you don't have to use it ever again if you don't like it, right? But while you're here, embrace it, try to understand it, take advantage of it. If you're not under, if you're not sure about it, ask the questions because we're here to help you, and we want to uh, we we want to make sure you're successful, right? Second thing, read and follow the practical exercises, the PEs. If you don't read the instructions, you're not going to do the assignment correctly. Right, and your FAs are going to have no choice but to mark points off. All right, we can't we can't give you credit for for what you intended. We can only give you credit for what you do. Right, so if you're following the instructions, you're going to be more successful than you're not. Okay, so read and follow the instructions. Right, pay attention to deadlines. So often we have somebody who forgot that there's a quiz coming due or they forgot that the assignment was due this Monday and they thought it was due next Monday because they're not following the calendar. All right, so look a week ahead, make sure you know what's coming due, and get your assignments in on time. All right, 
uh, you're just again we can't do anything about deadlines if you miss them all right if you're going to have you're running in trouble you're going to be underway or TAD or traveling or something that's going to wind up um, pushing you up against the wall with a deadline contact your FA early if you contact your FA early your FA can maybe work something out with you right we can't do anything after the fact we can only work with you ahead of time and when I say contact them early that doesn't mean 45 minutes before the deadline okay give them time to be able to work it out all right so get ahead of time all right but communicate 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 with your FA which was the next point on there all right use your mess you've got a chief's mess in each color group all right and for our non Navy students welcome to the mess all right we we work together um, you got a great team to work with and uh, there's pretty much nothing that can keep a mess from getting something done if they work together. All right, so um, the only thing I'm going to tell you that you can't work together on is your quizzes, right, and exams. Those you got to do by yourself, right, but you can study together, right, but when it comes time to taking the test, you got to do it on your own, all right. Um, so, but use your mess. They're, it's a great resource. Bounce the, your, your outlines, bounce your your drafts, your essays off of each other, and uh, you'll become a very cohesive unit and probably have a much more enriching experience as well. And then you saw the academic mentor list that I, that I, that I provided you in the writing resources. If you don't have one, try to find one local. If you can't find one local, open up that list and give somebody a call or shoot them an email. These people want to help you out and want you to be successful. All right, what's next? All right, some good to know information. Hopefully by now you've downloaded the student handbook. If you haven't, do it. Do it after, right after we get done with this. All right, the student handbook has a gold mine of information. Matter of fact, a lot of the questions that may be circling around in your head may already be answered in the student handbook. And the reason is because those questions have been asking often enough that we put them down in writing and gave them to you as a resource. Okay, so get that student handbook, open it up. It's got a lot of good information. If you can't find it in the student handbook, and you can't find it in the syllabus, definitely ask your FA, right? And, uh, and we'll point you in the right direction, and we'll help you out. Okay, so group shirts. So when you come in residency, um, we get to do some group PT events. Uh, we have a competition we call the Buyer's Cup, and we have some, some group you know, times we get together as a group and go PT. So you can design your own group shirts, right? Based on your color group, talk to your FA. You might be able to give you some examples. Um, but you can design your group shirts, right? If you do, if you start early with this, then you've got plenty of time to get it designed and get things shipped where they need to be shipped and, uh, and so forth, right? Let's talk about legacy gifts. So legacy gifts are optional. They're not required. Many classes, um, do uh, like to leave a legacy gift behind. So it could be as simple as a collage of photos from the uh, from the class, or it could be something very elaborate. If you look at the uh, SCA Facebook page, you'll see, you know, scan through those, you'll see some pictures of it, of um, different legacy gifts that have been presented to the Senior List Academy. So if you want to get a head start on this, um, you know, contact, uh, you know, start throwing some ideas around. Um, and you know, have a have a plan when you come in house, and you'll get can knock that out. Okay. Last thing we want to talk about is class surveys. At least for the good to know information, class surveys. Dr. Bud Baker is going to be sending you surveys. Okay. The surveys um, provide us you know feedback for the different phases of the of the course. All right. Try to answer those don't skip those those are important because what happens is that you provide us feedback all right and then we take your feedback and try to improve the course with it okay so when you're when you're answering those questions answer honestly all right this is there's no retribution for your answers all right we want you to we want you to answer honestly if you don't like something tell us you don't like it all right but just don't tell us that it's that that it, it's horrible tell us it's horrible and tell us why it's horrible and even if you have a chance tell us what you would do to improve it Okay, because some of the best ideas that have come from these surveys have been integrated in this course. 
All right. This course is designed by senior enlisted leaders for senior enlisted leaders. All right. And that's not just the staff here that helps do this. It's the students that come through. So ask your, you know, if you answer those surveys, get those in when you see them come out, knock them out, provide us some good, honest feedback. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, don't hold back. Let us know. And if we're doing something right, put that on the survey too, because we want to know what we're doing right so that we can keep doing it. Right, so it's not just an opportunity for you to um, say, "Hey, this is wrong." It's also a good time to say, "Hey, you're doing this right, and I love it. Let's keep doing that." Okay, so be hit those up. Uh, one other survey that you're going to see, if you haven't already seen it yet, is you're going to see a P-type survey from Dr. Bud, personality type survey. All right, that is a um, prerequisite for a lesson when you get into residency. So when you see that come out sit down, take that survey. When you're taking that survey, and you'll find it in the instructions, but I'm going to cover it now. When you're taking that survey, take your Navy hat off, your Marine Corps hat, your Air Force hat, whatever hat you're wearing, take that off and, and take the survey from a personal point of view, all right? Just how you are every day, okay? Kick your shoes off, relax, take the survey in that, that time, type of frame. Um, the, the P-type survey is not the Hogan test, but it's very similar. I see that in the question bank here. Um, we don't do the Hogan here. We do um, MBTI, Myers-Briggs uh, type indexer. Okay. So, um, but thanks for that question. All right. So class surveys, knock them out. You'll you'll be Dr. Bud's biggest uh, biggest you know your best friend if you do that. All right. So. In summary, we talked about navigating Blackboard, major assignments, discussion boards, keys to success, and some good to know information. I know I went through this rather quickly, but now we have some time for um, questions. And uh, if there's any, any questions still out there, uh, go ahead and speak up now. You can unmute your mics and ask. Okay, no questions. I see some uh, Myers-Briggs letters. Should you reserve a room? A room for what? Is this the only time we will have a group discussion as a class? Yes, as a whole class, this is the only time. Um, what we will have, uh, but your depending on your FA, um, they may hold an individual group level uh, uh, webinar type thing like this. It all depends on who you have. Um, not everybody does them, um, but if you have questions and you want to set something up, um, talk to your FA. They might be able to work something out for you. All right. Uh, room reservations. Uh, yeah, if go look at your travel information. There's, there is going to be a link for that. So you will have to make a room. Yeah. Make your room reservations. Okay, there, there's a whole set of instructions. I, I, that's, that I could speak for a half an hour on that alone if we had to. So um, there are. Look in the student handbook. The student handbook has answers for that. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah. If you have questions about your lodging and travel and stuff. Hit your FA up, and your you know your FA will give you some guidance on on where to go and how to do that. Okay. Any other questions? How early can the quizzes and essays be completed? That's a great question. So you can you can take a quiz right now. All right. Just know this: you only have one shot at it. All right. You only have one opportunity to take the quiz. All right. So if you take it too early, and you score poorly, you can't go back and make it up. Right, but they are open right now. If you can see it under quizzes, it's available. Okay, so go ahead, uh, you know, and do it early. Don't wait until 6:59, the day the quiz is due, to start it because it's going to wind up showing up late. All right, so try to do it before then because you never know if the system's going to be down or the, uh, um, you know, or your computer's going to crash on you, uh, you know, in the, you know, right before you get to take the quiz. So don't wait till last minute, but don't go so early that you're going to wind up missing information. Okay? Hopefully that answers your question. 
yeah get ahead yes do work ahead but don't work so far ahead that uh, that you're not engaged with your group all right uh, Rob good information quizzes are multiple choice uh, so a good question do families normally attend graduation so um, Yes, we have families attending graduation all the time. If they're traveling, that's something that you're going to have to arrange yourself if you're local. Um, when you come in residency, we, uh, we put together a, you know, we, we gather that information, um, as well as your command leadership. If your command leadership plans on attending, uh, then we'll need to know that when you get here, right? That's all stuff you can, you, can, you can work on planning ahead right now, but we don't need to know about it until you come in residency. Week one checklist, DB requirements is different than the PDF version. Which one is correct? You know what? I'm going to have to get with our course director to make sure we've got the right one posted, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, go with the one that's posted in the, um, in the, in the Blackboard itself. Uh, that should be the correct one. All right. And we'll, we'll verify that the PDF is correct. Okay. Should we wait to do a DB post for the week we are in? I plan to read and view on Sundays and finish writing on Monday to Tuesday. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm not going to answer that one directly. Um, contact your FA. Uh, your contract FA does most of the discussion board posts. Make sure that uh, you coordinate with them as far as how far they'll, they, they would like you to work ahead um, and get ahead on that stuff. All right. Again, communication is the key. You, you communicate with them, they'll tell you what the plan is, and that way you can knock out as early as you need to. I know we have some folks that get underway and don't have very much connectivity, so if you communicate early with your FAs, they can uh, tell you how far ahead to work and so to account for that stuff, all right? Was the one thing you wish was you knew when you started the course? What was the one thing I wish I knew when I started the course? Um, how to view my feedback and my essay when it was sent to me. So um, when you download your essay, if it opens up in Google, you're not going to be able to see the track changes or the comments on the side. So make sure you download it and open up your essays in Word. All right. That's the only way you're going to be able to see those those little comments that are in the margin. So that's one of the, probably the one thing I wish I had known. All right, good information, information. What's the quizzes? Are, the quizzes are on the material that you read from week to week. All right, so when you see the, the due date for the quiz, it's on everything up to that point. All right, did I miss anybody? You got uh, the question about house hunting. You have to work that out with your command. Um, if you are a PCS student, uh, we only do the PCS part. The house hunting, um, you'll have to coordinate with your uh, your gaining command or your losing command. All right. Okay. So a couple more questions, and then we're going to wrap this up. How long are the quizzes? There are, uh, I think, 20 questions each. You have a Mac. Um, if you don't already have a the Word version for your for your uh, your Apple product, then yeah, you probably will, or you'll have to. Uh, you, you, we recommend writing in Word, right? Because that's what we use here, and that's how we open it up. So sometimes there's a conversion problem if you write it in some other format, but it should be saved as a .doc or a .docx. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, oh, the quiz is open book. Um, well, since you're doing it from your computer, yes, they are. Right. The final exam is not, however. Grammarly is a great tool. If you have access to Grammarly, yes, use it. It's awesome. All right. All right. Any other questions before we knock off? Yes, that is correct. Secondary responses are replies to other classmates' primary post. That is correct. Uh, 
All right. Any other questions before we knock off? All right. Well, if you think of something after the uh, the webinar here, please contact your FA. And uh, if it's something that the whole group can benefit from, um, we'll try to share that with everybody. And if uh, if not, have a great week. Happy birthday to the Chiefs again. Hoo ya! And uh, have a great night. Thanks for attending.